Oh, are we on? we're on, but you know what? I messed up. So if anybody's watching, I didn't do the opening. <laughs> Here we go. Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to today's live Scumbassador demonstration. I'm Carrie Fonte with Rusal Education. We're so happy that you're here with us to start this week. Um, during the course of this demonstration, any questions, comments, thoughts that you have, please type them in the comment section. I will interrupt our Scumbassador and we'll do our best to get your questions answered. If we don't get them answered during the live, we'll go back and get them afterwards, I promise. We are so uh, thrilled, happy, excited to have Bailey Russell with us today. She's a scumbassador in Wichita, Kansas, here in the United States. Uh, Bailey will take over in just a second. But now that you know where Bailey is from, please let us know where you're watching from. We love to see where the members of our Rusal family are. And with that, Bailey, take it away. All right. Good morning, everybody. I just want to say thank you for lending me your time and attention on this Monday. I hope everyone's had a good mo a Mother's Day weekend. Um, I wanted to start actually this morning uh, just to say that here in Wichita, we are still wearing masks and following the CDC uh, guidelines at our salon and other locations. But there are three of us here today and all of us have been fully vaccinated. So I do not have my mask on today just so you guys can better understand me. So this morning, I've got my model Chris right here and I'm actually, he's got a little bit of shorter hair on the side. So what I'd like to do is kind of do a little bit of in between a pomp and a scumbag boogie. Um, if you have any questions about cutting techniques, tools, products, let me know. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. That way I can kind of focus on a lot of styling, blow drying and uh, product knowledge for you guys because it's always adds so much value to also teach the person in your chair. Uh, how to use those products so that they can recreate it at home because that's what matters so to get started i've already uh washed his hair and i only use the daily conditioner his hair is very dense and coarse um and it kind of grows straight out so that softened it and allows a little bit of flexibility i'm starting with all of our haircuts what we do is we start at the top of the temporal and we make a nice little baseline section that goes from the top of the recession all the way to the center back dropped down to the center back here so if you could imagine there would be a nice little 
X in the back of the head. The reason why we do that is to create the baseline on the side. The baseline creates a really great square shape, which is more masculine for our guys. And it also gives you a guide to kind of cut up to. Now, I'm gonna start on the side right above the ear where there's a lot of room, there's more space there. I'm gonna scoop up all of that hair. Using a comb, my comb's a little bit lighter as well because this hair is dark. So you really wanna make sure that you can see the tools that you're working with. Scoop up that hair, make sure that the comb is at 90 degrees. You wanna stay parallel to your section. Put your clipper flat against the comb. And you're just gonna cut straight back. Now I'm gonna keep following my section here especially at the round of the head, I wanna make sure that when I scoop up that hair, I'm not over directing my comb one way or another. That's a stain at 90 degrees from the head. Scooping that up. Again, still following this section. This hair's a little bit shorter, so all the hair that I could scoop up with my comb has kind of fallen out at this point. Now you can move to the front. And if you need to, if you've got someone with longer hair, you can over direct the comb out a little bit. It's gonna leave you a little bit more hair to work with in case you're wanting to keep more length in the front. In his case, I am not. I'm actually gonna take this pretty short. So now that I've got my baseline, I'm going to go right underneath that and just follow that as my guide. Scooping up the hair, working at a lower section here. As I work down the head shape, I am going to taper my comb in a little bit. That way it continues to get shorter and shorter because we at Ruzel, we work from the top all the way to the bottom. This allows for a lot of control. And that baseline is very, very important because it's the basis of the haircut. It really does create a nice square shape and it works for any head shape, any hair, hair type, hair texture, curly baby. I'm excited. I'm getting to use my, these new custom FX by Babelis. So again, I am just following my first section. I'm just moving my way down and I am tapering in a little bit with my comb. And don't worry too much if it's not super perfect, if, you're, if you've got a little bit of a cross-checking to do because we will get there. I've been cutting hair like this for a while, so I don't always, you know, I've gotten used to my hand positioning and the feel of my comb, uh, but really use your mirror a lot. Use your mirror to take, especially when you're, when you're putting in that baseline, scoop up the hair, check your mirror, make sure that you are holding your comb at 90 degrees and make sure that you really are laying that flat, your clipper blade flat to the comb. So now that I've made the baseline and I've worked my way down, I'm actually going to go ahead and hop over to the other side and do the same thing. So again, doing a section from the temporal, the top of the temporal area, sectioning to the center back. Using the comb, brushing straight upwards, 90 degrees and flat. Do a nice swipe. This time I'm going forward since I'm on the left side. Still leaving a little bit of length at the front. Working back parallel to that section. 
creating that baseline, the nice square shape. It doesn't just create a square shape from the front view either. It actually creates that shape all the way around, no matter what uh, angle you're getting and what, uh, even the silhouette of the haircut has a nice square shape. So scooping up, going a couple sections under my baseline, starting to angle my comb just a little bit to kind of taper. And you want to make sure that you're even working a little bit past that center back. That way it's crossing. All right, staying parallel. And at that point, there we go. Kind of running out of hair. So, um, I'm gonna grab my one and a half guard, pop that on the clipper, head back to this side over here that we started with. And I'm gonna just work up and kind of cross check, even out, blend this fade. And it's lovely because I know exactly what I'm coming up to. This gives me a nice perimeter. I'm not cutting into it. I'm actually rocking my clippers back, preserving some of that length. And even though I'm cutting vertically, I'm still staying parallel to that section. So don't just go in and kind of cut straight up and create some square shape or some vertical square shape. You kind of want to bend your clippers a little bit and follow that guide. So this is a one and a half and this is about the perfect length that I needed. You know, longer movements with the clippers uh, takes off a lot of hair and takes off length, but shorter ones Shorter movements create a lot of blending. All right. So I'm gonna switch to a one guard now. Work my way down to a 0.5 until I don't need a guard. And I guess this is just more cross-checking than anything and blending because I've already created a nice shape that I wanted. And I forgot to mention that I put some Grusel grooming tonic in his hair before starting. Uh, the grooming tonic really, really gives me a lot of control with the hair, especially while cutting just enough to control some of the sectioning and push that over. So got some, yeah, got some of that in there. You can also put it in your water bottle, which is what I do, because that also helps, but it's not too heavy. So it's never gonna be too heavy. Um, and get sticky or anything like that. It just allows you to have a little bit more control. And as you're going, make sure that you're spraying the hair down so that it stays consistently even. So let me pop off my one guard, put on my 0.5. All right, I'm gonna hop over to the other side and repeat that. So far, so good. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a higher contrast of fade in the, in the top because he's got a really beautiful color of hair and I want to accentuate that a little bit. He's also a performer, so he needs a really cool haircut. 
So hopping on my 1.5 guard. Starting by the ear, working my way up to that baseline, making sure to not cut into it. The hair on the baseline starting to dry just slightly, which I'm okay with because then I'm not gonna put too much tension on it while I comb. I'm just, again, working up to it, not cutting into it. And keep in mind at this point, the most important thing about the haircut is keeping the integrity of that squareness that, that the baseline creates, also just creating a nice fade up to it. If you guys see a little bit of choppiness or lines, which you're gonna see here, Chris's hair is very dense and it grows straight out. So right now I'm not so concerned with the edge of this baseline, I'm going to go back through whenever it's dry and I'm going to soften that. So if it seems a little bit choppy or if it seems a little, a uh, little bit more high contrast and it seems a little hockey hairish in the back, you're on the right track. So just keep going. All right, transitioning to my one guard. Again, if you want to leave a little bit more length in the front, just make sure that you're over directing your comb backwards because you can always go in and do some customizing afterwards. But this is going to be slightly disconnected since the sides were a little bit shorter and we've been working on growing out the top a little bit. Um, since this hair is so thick and it's very straight and very dense, as it was shorter, it was a little bit harder to control the length or the, the direction of how it laid on the top because it needs some of this length on the top to hold itself down and actually be a little bit more low maintenance for him. So I'm not hearing any more hair cutting. I'm going to switch to my point five. Repeating the same patterns. I'm still working, just kind of cross-checking from the bottom, going all the way up, rocking my clippers out and blending in the previous hair length. Okay, now I'm pretty good with that. I think that looks exactly where we need to be so far. So now I'm actually taking my guard all the way off and I'm going to just kind of carve out the hairline that I want and then blend up that little, blend up that hairline to fade into the taper. So pushing this all the way down and this is zeroed out. So it's very, very, it works well as uh, trimmers as well. I'm following his natural hairline. You want to make sure that you never cut into anybody's natural hairline because that's going to make you look good for a few days. Work with how the hair naturally lays. lays. You're not going to win against natural hair patterns and growth. So before we started, and I've cut his hair before, I've made sure to consider calyx, uh, neckline, hairline, and all of that. So I'm just following his natural hairline connecting it up to the hairline around his ear. Push the ear over, go around through the back, push it back, push the ear backwards and work around the ear. Mm 
I'm going to hop over to this side and do the exact same thing before I start blending. That way I just have a nice parameter to work with. And here at the Eric Fisher studio, we actually offer free neck trims. All you have to do is just pop on in and in between your haircuts. That way we can do a quick five minutes and just kind of clean up and sharpen up the neckline. And it'll give you a little bit longevity between haircuts and keep you looking a lot sharper. All right. I'm gonna blow dry this hair out of the way and actually use my brush here to brush out any little pieces of hair in there so that I can see the cut a lot better. And a little bit deceiving when you've got lots and lots of pieces of dark hair floating around. So next part, I'm um, no guards. I'm actually going to just push this lever up and uh, work my way up on the hairline and kind of blend that in. I know some of us will kind of stick in a hard line and then blend that out, but I'm gonna keep this fade a little bit lower. You know, and we at Russell like to say, this isn't the only way, it's not the only right way to cut hair, this is just our way. We work from the top, we work down, we create that baseline, and you can apply that to any length of hair. If his hair were a lot, lot longer, I could do the exact same thing. Just be more mindful of my comb and allow more, allow more length on the baseline and then work up from there. You can also just use your shears if you'd like to. I find cutting the baseline with my clippers more fun than anything though. I'm still keeping my clippers parallel to that baseline there, rocking them up to preserve any length, not create a hard line there. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. While you're doing that, I just want to share with you that we have Russell family members viewing us from Canada, Sweden, Bulgaria, Holland, Thailand, Indonesia, Uruguay, Nepal, and the United States. Oh my gosh, that's so wild. It's so, so much fun. Here every time, that's so cool. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm from Kansas, not quite as cool as your guys' places. <laughs> Do I have any lefties on here? I'm actually left-handed and I always love to shout out to my left-handed barbers. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. I really, really appreciate it. I'm trying to quickly work on this fade because I know everybody that's tuned in right now are very masterful at fading to kind of get to a little bit more styling and uh, product knowledge. But please, any questions you have for me at all, I would love to answer those. All right, so now I'm going to close my clippers a little bit and just get a little bit tighter there around the hairline. Kind of moving my clippers around a little bit just because he's got uh, his bone structure here. I just got to make sure that I'm kind of getting the right angle in order to systematically even out that, that fade and that taper. Bailey. Yes, ma'am. There's the question. Um, it's written, I missed the beginning. Did you put a baseline in with a number two around the parietal? 
I put the baseline in from the temporal, the top of the temporal back, obviously center back. And I did not use any guards. I just kind of made sure that I was looking in the mirror. I was bringing his hair out to the length that I want. And specifically with Chris, you know, his hair is very, very dense and thick and it grows straight out. So I wanted to go as short as I possibly could, but mindfully leave as much length as I could to, so that it would fold down naturally so it wouldn't just stick straight out. So I just determined it uh, really just by visual through the mirror. Uh, and then, um, you know, worked my way down the baseline. I kind of, that was my guide, worked my comb up. And now I'm at the point where I'm cross-checking and blending the hairline. Hope that answers your question. I hope I understood that right. But yeah, no guards, just clipper over comb. All right. So now I've got a really wonderful baseline. Let me get some of this hair off of them. You know, if you need to, if you need to measure the length of your baseline and you're not sure, and you know, looking in the mirror is a little bit more difficult, you can always grab your comb. I mean, they've got measurements on there. You can pull it out, measure the front uh, if you'd like. I kind of just eyeballed it. So now that we're on to the sides, this baseline is kind of dry and that's okay with me because I've kept the top wet and I want to make sure now that this is dry, I'm just going to quickly go in and this is just kind of cross checking. I'm going to use my shear over comb. I'm going to cut straight up. So if my hands kept going, it would reach directly to the ceiling again at 90 degrees. And I am just going to soften a little bit of that of those lines right there that I created, and then we'll move on to the top. You could wait until you got all of the hair dry, but since I actually kind of dried his hair down a little bit before we started to just get a little bit of control, re-wetted it as it was laying down. And now I'm just barely going in um, just because his hair is so dark and it's, you know, the, the fade and the contrast is very visual. And before I lay the cool part of the hair, the long part of the hair on top, I would just want to make sure for myself that I am blending out that baseline as much as I possibly can. So shear over comb, staying parallel. I've got uh, eight inch shears. I really like these. Uh, I think it's up to you. A lot of people like smaller shears. I prefer longer shears. It feels like I can get a better and more accurate line. I've always kind of thought about it if you're an artist and you know, you want to draw a straight line, it's kind of hard to do it in sections. So to me, those little sections represent the length of my shears. Um, now, if you want to draw a straight line, if I, were to, if I were to be asked to do that, I would do one swipe and I'd get a lot closer. And I feel like using longer shears is in, in some way, this it's similar. Bailey, there's another question for you. Mm-hmm. Do you always use your barber shear for this part or do you ever use your texturizing shears? I'm gonna use my texturizing shears once I get the top of the haircut and dry. Uh, the reason why we do that is because I only really use those for blending shears, to blend. I don't use them too much to create a, actually a lot of texture. If I were to do that, I do that with my shears. I have more control. Also those create you know, the teeth create a lot of short hair and long hair. Short hair always pushes long hair out. And with his hair, if I were to go in too deep in any area of this with texturizing shears, 
it would create a lot of short hairs inside of his long hair and then end up expanding his hair out, which we don't want because it already naturally does that. His natural texture does that already. So I am going to use those. I just, I wanted a really nice clean line. It's still sharp, but at least it's blended. So we will get there. Thank you for that question. Now I'm going to move to the top for now. So this next part here, I'm going to isolate this very front piece that's the longest piece. We call it the cool hair, the most, most fun part. I'm gonna isolate that out just from the temporal. I'm gonna go straight back, kind of create a little triangle shape. Push this out of the way for now. That way I don't accidentally scoop it up. So get that long piece out of the way. And I'm going to start connecting the top to the back. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take kind of a crescent moon section from right above the ear all the way to the center back. And I'm gonna comb that directly down towards my baseline. Now, as you can see, you've, you're already seeing a lot of his volume come out. It's starting to pop up a little bit. So I really need to make sure that I'm grabbing that. And I'm not actually putting a lot of tension on there. I'm just holding it straight out. The baseline is right underneath it. That's my guide. And it's still at 90 degrees from the head. And I'm being mindful to follow this all the way down. See, there we go. Now it's starting to blend. Now I'm gonna take another section, crescent moon section, and pull that down until I basically run out of length. Pulling it straight out here again. And if you'd like to, you can always elevate these sections as well. Elevation is gonna create softness. So if you've got somebody in your chair that's got real thick hair, real dark hair, um, or just the type of texture that's very unforgiving. Elevation is always gonna soften it a little bit and it's not gonna cut into your baseline. So as far as this section goes on this side, I've pulled as much hair that will reach. And now I'm actually going to, again, leaving this front piece, this longer hair out, I'm gonna take some Horizontal sections, I guess vertical is how you guys are seeing it now. Pulling that to the side, pulling that to the baseline. Now this time, I'm going to over direct my fingers just ever so slightly towards the front to preserve some of that length because I'm going to leave as much length in the very front piece and I wanna be able then I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna have some hair for it to blend to. So the rest of it is being pulled 90 degrees with a little bit of elevation and I'm going to connect it to that little crescent moon area. So now this will be pushed over and I can already tell that I don't think much of this is actually gonna reach back over, but we'll try Let's do another section down the center, pull that over and yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. It's reaching pretty well. This hair is getting a little bit dry. I'm gonna Water it down again with my mix of watering, grooming, tonic. And let's repeat that on this side as well. Start with the crescent moon and step by step do the same thing. Blend that in and we'll work our way to the top. So right above the ear, I'm going to make another section, crescent moon. I'm actually going to work in the back and go over this time. And again, combing that hair towards me. I feel the baseline in my fingers. I'm gonna create this of slight elevation, but barely, this is basically at 90 degrees. Working myself all the way up. Let's grab the, sec the second section, see if any of this hair reaches over. And it doesn't look like it. Because Chris's hair grows 
towards this direction, towards my left, um, I can actually see the little bit of the tain over here that I need to blend. So I'm not gonna go through section by section because as you can see here, it's basically like, you know, the width of one section. So I'm gonna pull that over. Leaving a bit of over directing towards the front again to leave myself some room to blend the longer length. I'd rather leave some length and, and be more conservative because I can go through and customize it when I'm done. If I need to use the blending shears to soften the edges, then it'll give me a little bit more room to preserve the length and not, I don't know, cut into that baseline, I guess. All right, combing the hair around, seeing if everything's kind of connecting the way I like, and so far it looks good. So now I am gonna cross check and just make sure that the haircut's blending. And I'm gonna do that with a vertical section going from the center back. I'm gonna actually anchor my palm in the back of the head and then over direct to the top, just to make sure I'm getting any corners off that I need. Always be mindful of your elbows, always be mindful to stand square like that was a great example of how you don't do it if you saw my hand positioning. <laughs> so let me correct that. Now this section is, I'm just gonna make sure it blends and I'm gonna make sure it blends up in an angle. Now, right here at the apex of the head, I'm starting to have some hair fall out. Um, and I'm, that's, that's, where, that's what we need. I don't wanna cut any of that because I'm gonna need that to be the longest areas. And just scooping this up, bringing it towards the center to make sure that I'm getting all of those corners out of there. Now, if you needed to go through and, you know, make sure that you're maybe creating a little bit more layering, um, you know, customize it as you'd like. But with him, I'm leaving it long. I'm leaving all of this almost one length because he needs the weight of his hair to kind of hold it there and style it. So I'm actually going to start blow drying and a quick run through because you probably I probably won't be able to talk over my blow dryer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of extra grooming tonic in there and then work it all over the hair, even the sides. I'm gonna start blow drying from the back. I'm gonna use a Denman and I'm gonna blow dry starting from the back forward because I don't wanna let long hair, long dry hair end up laying on wet hair. So once I get to the front too, I'm gonna use my Denman to kind of bevel and get him some nice volume. Uh, thank you to the grooming tonic. That's going to help a lot as well. And it's gonna control uh, probably make a bigger, kind of more uh, crazy version of, of what I'm gonna do, but then we'll use product to kind of push it down. So um, yeah, we'll start from the back, work to the front. You know, you don't need, Chris is not gonna need a blow dryer at home to create this awesome haircut, but we do need a good blow dry as we're cutting to create a haircut. Berta says it a lot more smooth than that, but I tried. So. Okay. <laughs> A little bit more grooming tonic, just to even it out. Really quick, I do want to point out, you never want to work against the natural uh, hair patterns back here if i were just to try to blow dry this against his whirl i'm not really going to win that so i'm actually going to go with it just in those areas that have different growth patterns
な形でつけます。I'm going to take my Denman and I'm actually going to kind of grab and scratch while I pull this up. Uh, the Denman already has a really nice bevel built in. And you really want to make sure the direction of your blow dryer, the air is going in the direction of the hair. You don't want to set it just flat against it. Good. So now that it's all dry, kind of looking a little bit crazy, that's actually exactly where I need it to be. I am going to take my blending shears and I'll come over to this, to this side. I'm going to comb down the hair and now I can really use these blending shears to make sure that I'm blending and also condensing some of the ends. And in fact, I'm going to grab my other ones because his hair is pretty thick. So, uh, so I'm going to use shear over comb and I'm going to go straight up, not, not necessarily cutting into that baseline, but just elevating and getting the ends enough to condense it down and soften it. Depending on who's sitting in your chair, you can be as, you know, aggressive as you need. With his hair, I need to be pretty aggressive.
Okay. Letting this section grow out from a previous haircut we've done, so that's why it's kind of sticking out. Um, it's not a part of my baseline, it's just a transition area. This side doesn't need it quite as much. And I'm actually just going to pull up and see if there is any sort of corner here um, just to kind of break up all of that hair mass that folds and hits to the left of his hair. Create a little space, a little movement. Now, I did not cut the front at all, and I don't plan on it. This little corner over on his right side, I'm going to just kind of taper that off. That doesn't need to be there. That's just going to be in his way. And using my edgers just to over my comb, edgers over comb, just to kind of clean up that corner. Okay. So, so far, I just have grooming tonic in his hair. But this part I really, really wanted to show you. I, I think it's really important that we educate our, our patrons. Uh, and I look at it like that. It's not just sales, but in order for him to recreate this look at home, he's going to need to know what product I use and how to use it. So today I'm actually going to use the Rusal Green Pomade. This is a medium hold. Uh, it's got a little bit of shine in it, but it's not too bad. It's also got some of the beeswax in there, which is really great for hair that tends to be more dry. And so anyway, Rusal Green, medium hold. I'm actually taking about two knuckles worth. We measure with one knuckle, two knuckles. Make sure you scoop that out. And it's really important that when you emulsify the product, whether it doesn't matter what pomade it is in your hands, that you're really making it even and in between your fingers. And also, this is going to transfer to how it looks on the hair. So if it's globby or there's big patches of it, specifically if you use more of the white pomades, uh, it's going to show up. So how it looks on your hands transfers to the hair. I'm going to start in the back, and I'm actually going to work from the back all the way forward, and I'm going more for the root. So I'm clawing that product up and under there instead of going right over the top just putting more weight on the top of the hair which is just going to collapse because it'll have no support at the root where it needs to be but then you work it all the way up all the way up take that residual on your hand go over the top and i also always add it to the sides so that it has an even finish an even reflection Again, his hair's pretty dry. It kind of drank up that pomade, so I'm going to reach for one more knuckle. I really like the green. It's really soft and easy to use. It's also uh, humidity resistant because it is oil-based. So again, working my way from the back to the front, and this is exactly what I tell Chris to do. Work, work it in from the back to the front. Make sure that you're really getting it on those roots. Take that residual, put it on the sides, and on the baseline and then i'm going to grab a wide tooth comb and we're just going to comb that through and distribute that evenly so all of that volume that he had from the blow dry it'll condense down a little bit and if i don't get completely completely finished with this i will make sure that i post a before and after picture of the results So 
So working that comb through, working that product through. I really like that we have lots of options. We've got pomades that have more of a matte finish. We've got some that have high and shine. Um, and really during the summer, I recommend using the Ruzel Matte Clay because what makes it matte is it's got a bit of powder in it. So if you're outside and you're sweating more, uh, that's actually gonna kind of soak that up a little bit. You can also cocktail these. So I'm actually gonna give them a little bit more, like style it with a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna cocktail the green and a little bit of the Ruzel Fiber Pomade. The Fiber Pomade is wonderful for almost any hairstyle. It's got these, it literally has these little fibers in there. If you emulsify it on your hands, again, thoroughly, put it in between your fingers too. That way you don't get caught on someone's hair as you're using it. But it actually has little fibers that move around. So when you apply that to hair, it hold, it has a good balance of holding well, but also having some movement. So I'm going through and I'm going to put this on top of that green pomade. So it, it actually is kind of wet here in Kansas right now. And uh, I wanted to do that for the humidity resistance, but also I didn't want it to be too sleek. So putting that in on the sides, pushing it all the way through the back. I'm gonna use my comb one more time to distribute that evenly. A nice little trick with these combs, uh, for some of my men, male, male patrons that have more thin hair here but that still want a pompadour, you can use that Ruzel uh, matte clay, put it up there because it kind of almost thickens the hair a little bit because of the powder. And you can slide your comb right into the front after you put some pomade on there, do some circles and it almost gives it a little bit of support, almost like it's like slightly back combing that front area. And I think that's a really nice trick for everybody to know because instead of trying, let's say this goes flat a little bit throughout the day while he's working, he could literally, instead of just putting his hands in there and kind of messing up his style, you've got a little comb in your bag put that in and then do little circles there and it'll kind of lift it up without, without messing up all the, the styling that you've done. Okay, I'm actually gonna grab this towel over here. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sharpen up like the edges here. I wanna use my uh, folders to get them nice and smooth on the back and in the neck. So these are my Babyliss boulders, and these are the best ones I've ever used. I absolutely love these. And I am slightly going into that hairline, just ever, just, just a tiny bit, just to kind of break up, break up the hairline and make it just blend out perfectly. Anytime you use shavers, balders, whatever, towards the skin, make sure that you've got the aftershave close by, which I do not, which I should grab real fast. <laughs> One second. Put a little bit of the aftershave in your hand and just pat it on to all those areas. I even kind of go up and over the ear. It's very mild. It uh, doesn't have a lot of alcohol in it. It smells good and it'll keep them from getting any sort of ingrown hairs and it'll end up kind of closing up those pores for them. Plus it feels good. Okay. And because he's got a nice awesome beard, I wanted to finish this haircut just by polishing this up a little bit. Now, I already 
just barely kind of edged him up. I didn't uh, take a straight razor to his beard or anything like that, but I really wanted to show what the beard products do. Now I'm going to start with the beard foam. The beard foam is wonderful. I'm going to do two pumps in my hand. I'm going to work it in, really work it into the skin as well. And it's a little bit sudsy at first, but it's actually one of the only products around that has a deodorizer in it. So when you use it after you've eaten a box of Krispy Kreme, you definitely don't look, smell <laughs> like it. It just kind of softens it a little bit. And men have real coarse hair and he'll get a little bit of control. So I've got really coarse hair. Mm -hmm. After just a couple minutes, it'll actually soak in pretty well. The suds kind of goes away and I'm gonna use just a brush to kind of smooth that out. Working down, it's much more controllable. much softer and I actually think when you're using these products as they grow out it kind of helps uh, relieve a little bit of that itchiness that you get. So big difference already and I'm going to top that off with a little bit of our balm. I use this a lot on men with longer beards you can take just, I just take a thumb, you know, a little bit of my thumb, pea size amount. Make sure you're emulsifying this. If it's in a temperature that's a little bit colder, it can get a little bit more solid, but warm it up with your hands and work that in the beard, especially up to the skin. This product is wonderful to soften the skin underneath. And you can also use it on your lips. Um, I do. You do, yeah. <laughs> All in one. Very good for the mustache. And since we've already used the beard foam, I don't have to use quite as much. But this holds it in place a little bit more than the beard foam does. I also lost the uh, plug to my bathtub at home and I used the cap of the beard foam or the, <laughs> the beard balm as my new plug now. Thank goodness it's helped me out a couple times. All right, so now we're done. Uh, the last thing I wanna do is on a windy day, which is every day in Kansas, every day, every single day, I actually use the spray tonic, uh, the surf tonic, almost just as a hairspray. I'm not using it as a scrunch spray, but I put a tiny bit mist over the top and that will keep it from flying around. So here are our end results. Again, it's a blend between like, pom uh, you know, classic pompadour and the scumbag boogie since it's a little bit shorter on the sides. And really everything that I've said today besides the cutting techniques when it comes to product I tell my clients this. I tell them step by step each product that I'm using and why. And it has helped a lot with business and it's made them a lot happier. And all of our all of our male patrons love Rusal, which just makes me happy because it lasts for a long time. It's such a great product. And every single one of them does exactly what it says it's gonna do. And when you know the tricks, it's very simple and easy, and it gives you a wonderful result. Now, if I wanted to grease them back a little bit more, I would use the pink pomade. The pink has the strongest hold and we could have easily, you know, put that in the hair, really, really stretched that hair back. Um, it would flattened it more like the Von Gard, but I wanted to give him a little bit of, wanted to give him a little bit of volume at the top and I wanted it to be nice and squared off. This is the first time it's been long enough to kind of wrap back. 
So I hope that you can see the silhouette because the baseline has created this nice square shape that you're seeing from the side. You see that it supports a really good head shape back here. And it even, so, it even creates a little bit of support over on the side that is the more dominant um, side that his hair goes on to and kind of supports that long length at the top. Yeah, and this will be so easy, so easy for him to style. The products he knows how to, he knows how to use them. He's been using them, and uh, every time one of them comes back to me, and I always ask him, "Do you have any challenges? Please let me know." Any tiny little thing at all, because there's always a remedy. There's always a remedy with product with styling, and uh, everyone says no. It always usually works pretty well. So there we go. Thank you, Bailey. Thank you, Chris, and and Silas for filming for us. It looks terrific. Uh, Bailey will take some pictures of Chris's final look and we'll post them on our page next to this video so you can go back in and rewatch it. There were a lot of really good tips and tricks that Bailey shared with us. Uh, we appreciate your time this morning, everyone that joined us, Bailey and uh, your team there at Eric Fisher. We appreciate you and, and all that you've shared and brought to us this morning. Next week, we will not have a live broadcast, but we will be back on May 24th another one of our ladies ambassadors christina poodle she'll be with us so we look forward to seeing you all have a great day be well stay safe continue to spread the greasy gospel bye bye thank you